Hey everyone, Bosco here from Parse. Today we're going to talk about migrating your database from Parse and just how easy that is. Let's get started. So the timeline with the Parse shutdown announcement is that the service will continue running until January 28th, 2017. But in order to really migrate your data and migrate your app eventually, you should not delay. Uh, so the timeline that we've outlined is that you should migrate your database by April 28th, and then you should have a replacement API server using Parse Server uh, by July 28th. Uh, doing this uh, gives your users enough time to upgrade, and by January of next year, hopefully you don't have any users with old clients uh, still hitting the old address. And it's really easy to do. Uh, so we're going to go over a few things, like the different hosting options that you have, some concerns about sizing, and then we're actually going to walk through the whole process of uh, creating a database through a third party and going through a migration. So we're going to start again at parse.com, where we have a big link for Migrate Existing App, which leads to our migration wiki. Once you get there, you'll see that we've put together quite a thorough migration guide that covers all the steps from moving your database to setting up your own API server and the whole timeline that gets you to next year. Okay, so let's scroll down a little bit. You'll see that we've created a visual overview that explains how the different steps go. So in this video, we're most concerned with the most important ones, which is, you know, step zero through one. Basically, right now you have an app and Parse is hosting the database and all of your clients are communicating with Parse, which is communicating with its own hosted database. Step one is the most important thing, which you need to do by April 28th, which is migrate your Parse database to somewhere else. And there's various options as to what that somewhere else is. Once you've done that, your clients will still communicate with Parse, but Parse will be writing and reading data to your Mongo database. So let's scroll down a little further. You have various options for where to put this. You can run it on your own infrastructure if you're comfortable with that. But most people will probably still want to find a provider who will manage all of the MongoDB um, details for you. Very common options there are MLab or Object Rocket. For this example, we're going to create an account on MLab and migrate an example database. So now we're going to go to mlab.com. mlab used to be called MongoLab, but now they're mlab. So what you're going to want to do is sign up here. Uh, the great thing about mlab is they have a free tier where you get a 500 megabyte uh, sandbox database. It's great for testing. It's great for prototypes, small projects, hackathons, test migrations, etc. So go ahead and click sign up. So go ahead and sign up for a new account with MLab, and then we'll continue. Okay, so now we're signed up for MLab, and we're going to create a new database. So we'll click Create New. They give us the choice of cloud provider. Now we pretty much recommend or require that your initial migration comes from the U.S. East Coast region. So we'll let it go to Amazon in U.S. East and we'll switch to single node pricing and we'll select a sandbox. Now if you're migrating a production app, you know, you can choose one of these higher options. But for this example, we're just going to go with the free sandbox. And we're going to give it a database name. And click create new deployment. Okay, now we've got our database created. So on this page, let's click that. And we need to create a user. So let's click this Users tab, and let's add a database user. So we'll create a username. I'm just going to use Parse. We'll come up with a password. Again, I'm just going to use Parse, but you should use something very secure. And I'm going to click Create. So now we have a user, which we're going to use to allow Parse to migrate our data from a Parse app to this. 
Now right here on this page, they show you what the connection string looks like. This is what we need to actually connect to the database. They give us this, and it has these tokens for database user and database password that we need to replace. So let's take that and just put it into a text editor, like notes. Just create a new note. I'm just going to paste this in and then use this to replace the username and password with parse and parse. So now we've got our connection string. We can close notes. So we see we have a database here. There's nothing in it, and we've created a user. Now we can actually go to our parse dashboard where I'm looking at an app that I have on parse that has some users and has some objects, various things in it. And what we're going to do is go down to the app settings page, click that, and scroll down under general where we have the migrate to external database button. So go ahead and click migrate and then paste in your Mongo connection string. So we're going to click begin the migration. It's going to validate our connection string and it's going to tell us, hey, we strongly suggest you enable SSL on your database. This is true uh, for this sandbox. It's not super important, um, but uh, that is a service that you can pay for with MongoLab, or it is something that you can set up when hosting things elsewhere. Uh, DigitalOcean has a great guide on setting up uh, a really nice deployment of Parse Server with Mongo and uh, securing everything through SSL and doing the migration that way. That that would be something great to check out. So the button now changes to Migrate Anyway, and that's what we're going to do. So click that. Once the migration starts, we get this nice little progress page. It gives us a job ID, and it starts to update some data. It goes through a few phases. First, we have copy snapshot, where it migrates all the existing data. Then it goes into a phase called syncing. It migrates any data that happened from when you clicked migrate until the current time. And once it catches up and it moved all of your data, it goes into the verify phase. While it's in verify, Parse is actually writing to both databases. Uh, when new data comes in, it writes it to Parse, but then it also sends it over to your new database. The intention here is that you can now go check it out, right? So it says I migrated 99 rows, 9 classes. You can go over to your MongoLab or MLab database and refresh the page or go to the collections tab and reload and you'll see that all of our classes have shown up now including a few extra which will disappear later um, but we have our local plays and our users and our test objects you can click in and, and actually look at some of the data and verify it that it all looks good and then when you're done you can click finalize. So once you click finalize, you'll get a warning that it's irreversible. So yeah, once you click finalize, then your app is now on that other database and it's no longer on parse. And we don't currently offer a way to go back. So make sure that you're ready at this point to move your database to this external source. So we'll click OK. Okay, great. You get a, a box that says congratulations, and you've successfully migrated your data uh, off of the Parse hosted solution. In our next video, we'll look at the next steps, which is setting up your own Parse server to serve traffic for your app.